Better late than never. It's 4 p.m. on, what day is it, Monday? Well, I guess I'm just now starting episode three of this road trip. I wanted to put a k &N air filter on the car to start off this episode, but it doesn't look like that's, good, that's gonna be able to happen. Um, I have Christian looking for one for me at either an AutoZone, O'Reilly, or whatever auto parts store has it um, on the way. But I gotta get back on the road because I wanna get home. I still have 1,115 miles to go. I'll tell you what, too. This car, here. This car feels a lot better already now that I'm down to like about sea level. So I think that was part of the problem. Well, it wouldn't, I mean, not really a problem. Oh crap, am I supposed to be in the left lane? <sighs> this is dumb. I might just have to floor it in front of this guy. Sorry, Cobalt. I gotta go on this road. Oh yeah, I think that's a big part of why the car felt sluggish was because like when I, when in the last video or in the first video, when I was complaining how slow it was, I was in like the mountains of Arizona. So duh, I mean way above sea level, I don't know how many thousands of feet. Yeah, as soon as I got down to Texas, I noticed like, wow, this, it feels punchier. Even with the AC on, it still feels a lot more punchy. I am loving this car. It's just, it handles pretty well. Uh, it's still comfortable. The seats are actually very comfortable. More comfortable than uh, the 10th gen and 9th gen SI seats from what I can remember. The elevation was what was getting me in the last couple videos. I've been in Texas all day, right? I woke up in, uh, at a gas station, maybe like 50 miles outside Amarillo on the Texas side. And you know, I like Texas. I've been in the Dallas area for, God, like two hours. I went to one auto zone, they didn't have the k &N filter, and then they told me it was in stock at another one. So I went there, and they said they in fact do not have it in stock. Also, another thing I'm looking forward to, I have five more bars of gas left. Once I get down to like two bars, I'll, get, I'll fill up with 93, and that'll be the first time I'll have 93 octane in this car, so it should feel even better. So apparently this gas station loves doesn't do 93 octane fuel. They only have 91. How ridiculous is that? I specifically avoided a Chevron like 10 miles back so that I could get gas here because I only have one bar now. Well, I did have one bar. I put a gallon and a half in so I can uh, find a gas station that does 93 octane. How lame is that? Like, I'm well, well into Texas. Ellie, were you crying and saying daddy? Hi, babe. Oh my God, these semi trucks, get out of the way, man. I uh, just pulled over to try to get 91 octane, or 93. This freaking gas station called Loves does not carry 93. So now I know, but here is what I think about that. Okay. Oh boy. Well, <laughs> that was, that was all hectic. Everything going on there was hectic. I'll, uh, I'll call them back shortly. Yeah, this car, okay. VTEC coming on right there. That was very noticeable. That was the most notable, notable. That was the most notable VTEC engagement I have felt in this car so far. Everything just feels better down here at, at this elevation, I think. Who are those people who say that Texas is flat? Yeah, there's a big part of Texas that is flat, but you still have elevation and stuff like that. Like the, uh, earlier when I was in Dallas, I looked over in the distance and I saw a mountain range. I like Texas. It has a certain charm to it that I just, I just like. Even in six gear, just kind of giving it some gas, it's going way, it's accelerating way better than it did yesterday or the day before. This whole trip has been a blur. I officially have 14 and a half hours left on my drive. I am a little over halfway there. 
about two thirds, I guess. I'm still, where am I right now? I'm in Tyler, Texas, and I'm going to be I'm going to be going through Shreveport, Louisiana, um, and then Jackson, Mississippi. I think I'll probably make it to Jackson, Mississippi tonight. Let's see. Right now, my arrival is 9:41 a.m. tomorrow. There's no way I can drive 14 and a half hours without uh, stopping and taking a nap though, so. I just posted the first video of this road trip uh, like three hours ago, and I've been reading your guys' comments. It uh, seems like 99.6% of you are really excited about it. There's one guy, there's one guy who's been commenting uh, ne negative comments on my videos for a while. He put a negative comment about eighth gens are known for cracked blocks and bad transmissions or something like that and i just blocked him from my channel so i don't have to see that crap anymore um yeah i don't i don't care i mean the 93 isn't already mixed in there yet but guys i i i can't i can't take my foot off the throttle i just can't my god VTEC kicked in guys that felt amazing when I shifted into uh, third it was it went out of VTEC just for a second and then I could feel it kick back in that was awesome dude I have been missing out this entire time you know between both of my cars now I have two Honda Civics right between both of them I have one and a half VTEX. I do, because you know the Type R only has VTEC on the. I can never remember that stuff correctly. I think the ninth gen has it on the intake side. Does the K20C one is it uh, is it on the exhaust side? <sighs> Guys, I know, I know. You're gonna grill me for that. I should know. I've had the car for three years. I just don't. I just can't remember for the life of me. But yeah, Cam Hill is one and a half VTEC strong. That's right. Also, another fun fact, this car has less mileage on it than my Type R. Between both of my Honda Civics, I have a total of, well, let me tell you right now. This car has 41,000 miles, the Type R has 44. So between both cars, I have 85,000 miles worth of Honda Civic. Feels good, man. This, it feels like this is where I should be. This feels right. I, I have such a high level of motivation and just enthusiasm right now that I have not felt in a very long time. There, and there's so many things that I want to do to this car. I already started creating a spreadsheet. Doing a, a full, genuine FD2 conversion is going to be wild. Like I'll have, you, you know, I've never seen an FD2 converted FA5. At least I don't think I've ever seen one. So I was trying to find the OEM Mugen parts. You know, the front lip, the rear lip, and side skirts. I do not want to get any rep parts on my car. So I was talking to Christian about it. I was like, dude, these are like impossible to find. You have to either buy them used or you have to buy reps. The people who are selling them used want like a million dollars for those parts because they're so rare. And then he's like, yeah, when I had my eighth gen, I really wanted to do an FD2 conversion. So I looked it up and I was like, yeah, I don't know. I'm not the biggest fan. And then we got off the phone. I kept looking at these FD2 converted FA5s and I was like, oh my God, this, you know what? I actually do like this a lot. The more I looked at it, the more I, I, I wanted to turn this car into that. So that's the plan. I'm gonna have to make a, a bunch of videos for me to uh, get the YouTube revenue for that. So hopefully that doesn't take too long because I would really like to be able to do the FT2 conversion, at least all the big parts, while I'm still here in Florida because I have Marco to paint. Man, this car. Absolutely loving this. I'll say it again, I can't believe I've been missing out this entire time. Just cracking true VTEC 
is such a pleasure. Finally found a gas station that has 93 octane. I have, uh, I think I have three bars of gas left. Man, I am falling more in love with this thing every second that I'm behind the wheel. Love it, and, and look how cheap the gas is here. 379, okay. I mean, I guess that's not super cheap. Two, uh, $3 for 87 is pretty cheap. I didn't even pay attention to how much gas was in California. Yeah, I mean, you have to gas up either way. So my thought process is why even pay attention? I need to do some lunges and uh, get some blood flow to my knee. My right knee has been bothering the heck out of me on this trip. This is by far the worst road I've driven on this entire trip. I'm in Louisiana right now. I just passed, I think I'm just coming out of Shreveport, I think that's how you say it. But it looks like they're doing construction and fixing this road, which is much needed. I mean, this is terrible. I am uh, deathly afraid of like getting too close to these concrete barriers whenever I have to drive next to them. I will avoid driving next to them at all costs, but right now I kind of have to. And it's this part right here that really makes me nervous, dude. I get my anxiety goes through the roof. I'm just not, I haven't learned the, like the boundaries of this car yet. I know it's not that wide. Like there's trucks behind me going through just fine, but I still just, I get freaked out. Okay, there we go. Well, perfect time to crack VTEC, right? Oh my God, dude. Holy crap, can you guys hear that? I guess I'm not cracking VTEC right now. This road is just abominable. Oh my God. Fix your roads, gosh darn it. This thing is way more punchy. See, this feels proper. This feels good now. I have 206 miles, and then I think I hit Jackson, Mississippi, and at that point, I'm going to go down Mississippi uh, diagonally until I hit Mo Mobile, Alabama, Mo Mobile. Is that, I think, I really don't know how far I'm gonna go tonight. I, I have people that ask me, like, where do you stop? And like, when do you plan on stopping? I just, I don't know. I just go until I feel tired. And then I usually get food and then find a good place to park and take a nap. Ever since, Saturday morning, I only have gotten a combined seven hours of sleep. More like, nah, maybe it's seven and a half for two days, and I'm surviving. But this will officially be the second fastest I've gotten across the country. I forgot how long exactly it took me to get the BRZ back, but I'm doing pretty well right now. I'll tell you what, too, Louisiana Highway Patrol does not mess around. I've seen three cars pulled over and I've only been in Louisiana for, I don't know, about 45 minutes or so. I'm out in, uh, I don't know, I think I'm in Arcadia, Louisiana right now. One thing I will say about the human interactions I've had since getting into Texas, to include Louisiana, is that uh, people are friendly. People at the gas station, um, people at Starbucks, like everyone seems to be more friendly and more personable uh, one guy told me God bless when I was leaving a gas station in Texas today. Oh, no, it was AutoZone. It's the first AutoZone I went to. Um, that's nice. The first road trip video, I told you guys that I have not driven an 8th gen in like four or five years. It was this Fiji Blue 8th gen that I was considering uh, purchasing. And me and Kenny went to go test drive it. So anyway, the seller at that time, his, uh, his name's Dominic, he just commented on the first video that I posted a few hours ago. I can't believe he's still watching. That's that's weird, man. I've been doing this for quite a while now. I think it was more like four years ago. So I started YouTube. I'm coming up on my fifth anniversary of uh, being a YouTuber. So that's cool, I guess. Where is this freeway entrance? God. Yeah, Louisiana has been the worst roads so far, though. Like. God, man. Do you guys think I should do it? No AC, maximum power. 
I think this time I'll start at uh, like 3,000 RPM. Get a feel for the whole power band. Let's go. Oh! oh okay. This car is fully awake now. Dude, this thing is gonna rip when it's full bolt on, tuned. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it in two stages. The first stage is gonna be intake, exhaust, tune. And I'm gonna drive it like that for a while. And then before I do the header and the motor mount or motor mounts, uh, I'm going to focus really hard on getting the FD2 conversion started. It's a struggle to figure out like what I'm going to prioritize and the order in which I'm going to modify. Cause it, like, again, there's just so many things I wanna do. I can't do it all at once. But anyway, just with an intake exhaust tune, I should be up like, what, 20, 25 horsepower? And it should feel a lot better. VTEC engagement should be, you know, substantially lower. And, oh my God, I, can, I just can't wait for the sound with that intake. I'm starting to get tired, guys. And it is uh, 9.24 p.m. I either need to stop and pull over at a, at a gas station rest stop in Jackson, Mississippi and take a nap. If I don't, then I'm gonna have to go all the way to Mobile, Alabama because there's like nothing between Jackson and Mobile. I remember, you know what? I do think I've taken this route before when I came back solo with the BRZ and I remember there being absolutely nothing. Maybe like a couple hole in the wall gas stations. Unfortunately, there are no Starbucks open on the route, which means uh, I cannot have another boba. I, I think I've had four bobas since I've been on this trip. It is 10.22 p.m. and I am in Tallulah, I think that's how you say it, Tallulah, Louisiana. I uh, was starting to zone out pretty hard on the highway. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a nap now. I, uh, I thought I was gonna be able to make it to Jackson, Mississippi, but this is what I've been doing. I just pull over when I feel like I need it. Oh, that's nice. I got my hat here, cover my eyes from the lights, and I have a sweatshirt to use as a pillow. See you guys in a little bit. 